Hi, this is Shannon Siever, and today we're talking about the second part of systems of linear equations. Specifically, we are going to look at um, solving linear systems by addition and uh, elimination. We're going to identify systems that do not have exactly one ordered pair solution, and we're going to solve problems using systems of linear equations. So let's look at solving systems by addition or elimination. First of all, you need to know, substitution works best when one of the variables in the system of equations has a coefficient of 1. When this does not happen, the easiest method to use is frequently solving by addition. So what I mean by this is if the variable, if you have something that looks like uh, x equals 2y plus 5, substitution would be easier. Or say I had um, 3x plus y equals 6. Again, substitution works really well for this because I can solve for y. There's no coefficient in front of it. It's just a 1. So substitution would work really easy for that. So that being said, uh, now let's talk about how you would solve by elimination. First of all, it is necessary to write both equations in standard form. Then, if necessary, we need to multiply one or the other equation by something so that we can eliminate x or y. So what this says um, is that we can multiply either equation or both equations by an appropriate non-zero number so that the sum of the x coefficients or the sum of the y coefficients is zero. This way we can solve for either just the x's or just the y's. The x or the y will be eliminated. We'll show that in the next screen. Then we're going to add the two equations together, and the sum of um, the sum of an equation in one variable. So you'll, that's the result will be just one equation with one variable. We're going to solve that equation for the one variable. Then we will back substitute it into the uh, original one of the original equations to solve for the other variable. Then we'll check our solution. So, let's look at this on the next screen. Here we have two equations, and right now what I can see, it looks like this one, the x's would be the easier one to eliminate because I would only have to multiply this equation by a negative 2. So if I do that, I'm going to rewrite the top one over here. I'm going to have negative 4x. And then negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6y. And negative 2 times 7 is a negative 14. Okay, so notice that by doing this now, and if I add my equations together, the x's completely drop out because 4 minus 4 is 0. Now if I add the rest of this together, I've got 5 plus 6, that's 11y. And then 3 plus a negative 14 is a negative 11. Now I can just solve for y. By dividing both sides by 11, I have y equals negative 1. All right, so I got y equals negative 1. Now I'm going to put this into either one of my original equations. It does not matter which one you pick. So I'll just pick the top one. I have 4x plus 5 times negative 1 equals 3. So notice that I'm replacing my y here with a negative 1 and I'm going to solve for x now. So I have 4x minus 5 equals 3. Add 5 to both sides. Now I have 4x equals 8. Divide by 4. So x is 2. So what we have found is really a point of 2, negative 1, where these two lines cross each other on the graph. So this is our solution. Now, we can go back and check our solution by substituting this point in to both equations and making sure it works. I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. We learned that in our last lesson uh, to do that. And when you're taking a test, it's always a good idea to check your work. So now, we have another equation here. But notice that we do not have this in standard form yet. So we need to put them in standard form before we can actually do the addition method. So I'm going to write this again as 3x. 
I'm going to add 4y to both sides, so I'll have plus 4y equals 2. And then on this one, I'm going to add 2x to both sides, so I'll have 2x plus 5y equals negative 1. Okay, so this one's a little trickier because there's uh, I can't multiply the x's by something to get rid of the x's, and I can't multiply the y's here on the top one by something to get rid of the y's. So I'm going to have to multiply both equations by something to get rid of one of the variables. I think I'm going to pick the x's to work with. I'm going to multiply the bottom one by 3, and I'm going to multiply the top one by a negative 2. That way we'll have 6 and negative 6 here for x's, and we can get rid of the x's that way. So I'm going to rewrite this down here. Negative 2 times 3 is a negative 6x. Negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8y. So wait, negative 8y, and then we have negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Then let's take 3 times 2, which would be 6x. 3 times 5 is 15y. And 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So notice that this 6 is now will totally disappear. We can cross those out. So 15 plus a negative 8 is 7y. And then negative 4 plus negative 3 is negative 7. So we can divide both sides by 7, and we have y equals negative 1. All right, so let's back substitute. We can go ahead and put this in to one of our original equations. And we can, let's use this one, because that one looks like it would be easier to use. We'll do 5 times negative 1 equals negative 1 minus 2x. Negative 5 equals negative 1 minus 2x. So now let's solve for x. Oops, oops, it's not 6, it's negative 4. And negative 2x divided by negative 2 for both. And we have 2 equals x. So our point, our solution here is 2, negative 1. That is where both these lines cross each other. Okay, so sometimes when you are actually solving two equations uh, to find a solution, you'll find uh, that there is no solution. So let's look at the three different types of happenings that could happen when you are solving for a solution. We just experienced this one where you have two lines and there's one solution where they cross. So the outcome would be x equals some number. We'll just it could be a, little a, and then y can be some number b, and then you would have some solution a, b. Okay, so we just experienced that. But sometimes when you're solving for two equations semi simultaneously, you'll notice that the variables drop out, and then you are just left with something. Let's say like 2 equals 2. Notice that 2 equals true is a true statement. Okay, so if it's true, that means you have infinite solution. So that basically is telling you that both those equations is the same line. They are both lying on the same exact place. And therefore, that it's infinite solutions and it's a consistent and dependent situation. Sometimes, however, you might end up with 2 equals 4. Well, 2 obviously does not equal 4. That's a false statement. And there is no solution in this case. The reason why there's no solution is look at the two lines here on the graph. They don't cross each other at any point. So therefore, there is no way that you can come up with a solution there. They don't have any points in common. That is an inconsistent system of equations. So let's look at the next couple of examples showing how this could happen. Okay, so let's look at this example. Notice that we have y equals 3x minus 2. This one's already solved for y, so substitution would be the easier method of solving the system. So let's do that. 15x minus 5 times, and I'm going to take this entire bit right here and substitute in for y. So this will be 3x minus 2 equals 10. We have negative 15x, negative 5 minus times negative 2 would be a positive 10. 
And notice that my x's here completely drop out. 15x minus 15x is 0, so I have 10 equals 10. This means I have infinite solutions, infinite, there we go, solutions. And it's really the same line if you look at the graph. Okay, so that is that one. Now, if this should happen to turn out, just say, pretend, it was like negative 4 equals 10, then it would have been no solution. So next we want to talk about some applications of all this, and we're going to look at revenue and cost functions. A company produces and sells X units of a, pro a product. So when we're looking at revenue, we want to look at how much are we earning. And we are really looking at the price of whatever it is that we're making and how, much, how many uh, times how many we sold, okay? This is the number sold. And then the cost function is how much it actually costs us to make the product. Usually we have a fixed cost, that's like the cost of heating the building in which we're making it, and then the cost of materials. So the fixed cost plus the cost of per unit times the number of units we made. These are two things you need to write down because you'll be using them later. Okay, so when looking at uh, cost and revenue, we need to find a break-even point. At what point does the company start actually making money after they've made so many products? So uh, the break-even point is where revenue equals cost. So a company that manufactures running shoes has a fixed cost of $300,000. Additionally, it costs $30 to produce each pair of shoe. They are sold at $80 a pair. So the cost function in this case, C of X, is going to be the fixed cost, which is $300,000, plus the cost per pair of shoes. So it's going to be $30 times X. We're going to also want to write the revenue function, that's R of X, and that's how much we are making per shoe, so it's $80 times X. We want to find the break-even point, okay? So where is it that they're equal? We're going to actually set C of X equal to R of X. So that'll be 300,000 plus 30X equals 80X. Okay, so let's solve for x. We're going to subtract 30 from both sides, 30x. And we have 50x over here and 300,000 over here. So if we divide both sides by 50, we end up with 6,000. So the company needs to sell 6,000 pairs of shoes in order to break even. If they sell more than that, they will make a profit. So, how much profit will they make? Well, that's really taking the revenue minus the cost. So if I wanted to find the profit of the company we were just talking about, my revenue, remember, was $80, so 80x minus my cost function, and I'm going to put that inside of parentheses is 30, 300,000 plus, and I think it was 30x. Yeah. Okay, so now I can simplify this out. Remember, if, if this is a negative, if I can make that a positive and make everything on the inside of this negative. So this will be negative 300,000, and 80 minus 30 would be 50x. So my profit function would be this. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll give you a story problem and they'll say, what is the profit that you make if you may, uh, sold 8,000 shoes? And you would substitute X in for 8,000 in for X. Okay, so that's the end of today's lesson. If you have any questions, please bring them to class tomorrow.